This is Road Dog Trucking News with Mark Willis. We've assembled some of the nation's leading health and industry experts to discuss how the trucking industry gears up for another wave of the pandemic, lessons learned from the first time, and how drivers can prepare for what may be to come. Here's Mark Willis. All right, welcome back to the show. Greer Woodruff is on. He's the Senior VP of Safety, Security, and Driver Personnel at uh, J.B. Hunt. And Greer, I want to welcome you to the program. You know, it's interesting to talk with the uh, number of guests that are on the program earlier, uh, ranging from the medical side uh, to folks that analyze the data, like Lee Klaskow with Bloomberg, uh, also Jennifer Smith with Wall Street Journal was on a little while ago. And one of the consensus or messaging points that I'm gathering from all of this is the fact that, you know, we're looking at a resurgence of COVID in, in many states out there, but it sounds like trucking is gearing up. In a worst case scenario, if something happens, trucking is going to be ready because there have been a lot of lessons learned uh, from the first go round with this. It's great to have you back on the radio, sir. How are you? Hey, I am great. And Mark, I think you're exactly right. I mean, we know that uh, American truck drivers can be depended upon. Yeah, absolutely. They step up to the forefront. I think what's really great as well is that uh, the the mainstream public now recognizes that and, and hoping that uh, this momentum continues on as we get a handle on the COVID-19 situation, right? What are, you hearing, what are you hearing from your drivers about that, about collectively bringing the country together? Well, I think they're very proud. Uh, you know, they stepped up when we were facing a time of a lot of fear, a lot of uncertainty, uh, we were slow out of the gates getting the PPE and the protections that uh, our drivers needed, and they were out there doing the job uh, the best that they could. And so I think they're very proud. They stepped up, and we know mm-hmm. that we can always count on them. Uh, let me get your thoughts on this, Greer. You know, the trucking industry and, in fact, the entire supply chain has had to make some very big changes in the way uh, that business is being conducted. I can think of things like, you know, the digital applications like the electronic bills of lading, more drop and hook, more final mile. In your estimation, is this the start of many more changes uh, we could see ahead? What What's uh, in your crystal ball as far as that goes? Well, I mean, I would say the supply chain is always resilient and it always finds a way to find equilibrium over time. Uh, I think we've been through the most challenging parts of COVID in terms of the supply chain where you know, it was very fearful early, but now we know how to deal with this disease better. Um, we had sheltering in place early on, and we had to kind of adjust and understand that we were part of the critical infrastructure and that we could operate into those areas. Uh, PPE, as I mentioned, was hard to get, and there were delays in getting it, but now there's plenty of supply. Um, in terms of adjusted business practices, you know, I think a lot of those are going to continue. Uh, there's improved efficiencies as a result of those, and maybe we were forced to adopt them quicker than we might otherwise have adopted them, but they're good business practices. You know, electronic shipping papers and things mm-hmm. like that, you know, I, I think are here to stay. When you look at this also, Greer, from the safety side of the trucking equation out there, the FMCSA had some relaxed rules uh, during the pandemic, but uh, safety has always been job one. Uh, for the drivers. Sure, there's been some relaxed rules, but uh, drivers have always maintained safety first and foremost, right? What do you hear from your drivers about that? Oh, yeah. I mean, our drivers, we really don't use the exemptions that FMCSA has provided. We just haven't really needed to. Um, so, But our drivers are always going to put safety first. I mean, this is their livelihood. They understand that what they're doing is uh, can be life-altering if it's not done in a safe and responsible manner. And you know, they're just not going to take those kinds of chances. They're going to they're going to always uh, operate, uh, you know, at the safest levels. When you look at uh, the data that's uh, going to be collected with all of this, uh, Greer from the FMCSA's, uh, their view, their their standpoint with this, uh, do you think that once they analyze all of the data, they go back through and they they look at every single point, all the the I's dotted, T's crossed? Do you think that maybe we'll see maybe some changes? In the hours of service, maybe proposals for uh, some rulemaking revisions. So what do you think is going to go on with that data 
that's collected through well, all this? What, what are your thoughts? You know, I think the data is hard to get. I don't, I don't think it's as easily available, and I'm not sure it can really be applied to normal circumstances because the exemption is an example you know, applied on a load by load basis, depending on the commodity the driver was hauling. Mm -hmm. And so you might have one load where you weren't applying the exemption, the next load, maybe you were, and then the load after that you weren't. And so that makes it so granular in terms of perhaps applying the exemption that I think it would be hard to track. And then, uh, you know, we did have a low level of traffic out on the roads for mm -hmm. April and May. Um, to where the jobs of uh, drivers was a little bit easier without all the traffic to contend with, mm -hmm. that it kind of makes it uh, uh, difficult to apply those situations to um, a normal, you know, freight volume and normal congestion and those types of things. When you look at uh, the technology that is going to be brought to the forefront as we go forward from here, on so many different levels, uh, like the the you know, lane departure warning systems, collision mitigation. And, and things like that, that is going to become more of the norm in the industry overall, uh, I would expect. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Will we see more technology moving forward? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, I think your larger fleets are already uh, procuring those technologies now and have been for a number of years. Um, the take rates, I think, for uh, some of the larger OEMs are over 70% for like the forward collision warning systems. And so I think you're going to see those starting to show up in the secondary market where those fleets that buy used trucks or maybe independent operators that buy a used truck will already have those technologies on them. And then, of course, they've got to make a decision if they want to use them, if they want to continue to maintain them. But I think they're certainly going to be more and more available. And every generation of these technologies gets better. None of them uh, replace the necessity of having an alert and mm -hmm. defensive driver uh, behind the wheel. They're there to be an aid to the driver, but they certainly don't replace the necessity of having a real professional behind the wheel. I would imagine if you look back, uh, say, in the 30-plus years you've been with uh, J.B. Hunt, you've seen technology change really dramatically over the course of the years. I've got about three minutes left. Look back to when you first got started, I believe back in 1987, as to where we are now. Uh, with technology, it's almost like night and day with the differences, isn't it? Well, I mean, back then you were p replacing uh, the necessity of communicating with a payphone. Nobody <laughs> right. even knows what a payphone is today, <laughs> Right. Uh, you know, that's under 30 years old. So uh, sure. that was early technology. And, and <laughs> then you had, of course, the onboard recorders. And, you know, you had some forward collision warning systems back in the 1990s that weren't ready for prime time. That's true. And uh, now you've now you've got them, and and they're working really well, and they're getting better all the time. You know, it would be an interesting experiment, Greer, to uh, maybe have somebody that's like oh eighteen or nineteen, you know, and put them in front of like a rotary phone and, and see you know what their response would be with that. You're you're right. I mean, the technology. Well, I, I saw that one time, Mark. I saw them <laughs> had a rotary phone. They handed the kids a phone book and asked them to order a pizza. <laughs> oh my! They couldn't do it. I uh, bet the results were hysterical, to say uh, the very least. Uh, Greer, I'm almost out of time. And thank you, sir, for uh, the great insight with this. Great, great job. Thank you, sir. I'd, li I'd like to see that experiment with the, uh, you know, the young people trying to di order a pizza through a rotary phone. I bet that's an incredible thing. Uh, Greer, I'll thank you, sir. I'll find that and send it to you. <laughs> that, that would be great. Thank you, sir, for spending a few minutes with us. And, again, that's Greer Woodruff with J.B. Hunt. Uh, Senior VP of Safety, Security, and Driver Personnel 